I'm very low on love. Could you please go get some? I'll give you some money. There's a quick trip down the street. Does Grubhub do love? Is it called Love Hub? Is that a different kind of thing? What about a service where people deliver love to your house? Hold on, wait a minute. I just invented prostitution again. Well, you know, sex and love aren't the same thing. Yeah, tried telling that to a... uh, uh, I'm just going to go get some water. When I come back, you know, maybe have... Have a f- an end to that sentence. Brian wants to do a Brian, Brian wants to do Brian wants to do a pod 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 podcast. Hey, hi, hello. This is Friend Dog Studios, and welcome to Brian wants to do a podcast. The podcast where, darn it, we're still trying to figure out what kind of podcast we're gonna do. I'm Ben Oxer. I'm Brian Huther. Brian, my writing partner. He has so many ideas, so many ideas for podcasts in particular that we're still sorting through them and trying to figure out what the optimal one would be for us to stick with. So, Brian, you got a new idea you want to bring to the table today? Uh, Yeah, yeah, I got a new idea, but you don't want to ask me about my day or my week at all or like... Well, we were talking about some of that, you know, before we we, we talk about that outside the context of the show. Prove it. Well, I don't have recordings of that. That that that's why I mean. That is my point. You want me to record our every interaction? I sometimes I doubt our friendship when we're not in the same room together. Okay, I'm not a psychologist, but it sounds like you have some sort of abandonment issue. Excuse me, excuse me. It's called codependency. And I have worked for many years to develop it. This has been a goal for you? Did you put codependency up on a vision board? Yeah, I saw it on my taxes and I thought that's something I need to do as an adult, right? No, 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 no. That that, that, that That's a dependent, not a codependent. That's like a, a child that would be within your care that without your financial support wouldn't be able to survive. <laughs> OMG, LOL. This is a classic Brian mix-up where I go and develop a personality issue that causes problems in my life just trying to save a few bucks on my taxes. That's Brian. <laughs> oh, what's up, Uncle James? <laughs> oh boy, Brian again. Here in the room I'm in. <laughs> I'd just like to visit you down in your science laboratory, Uncle James. Get out of here, Brian. What? I'm not up to no shenanigans. Not today, no, sir. I'm working on something special today. It's a special kind of chair. What? Where you sit in it, you switch personalities. No way. I'm going to sell it to the military, maybe. <laughs> I don't want to try it, not at all. Good. Now you go ahead and don't try it while I step out of here for a minute. Also, my dog is sleeping on one of the personality switching chairs. Don't disturb her. It's her nap time. I love this episode. Let's skip forward to the part where let's skip forward to the part where Brian is in the dog and he is, tries to play guitar still. <laughs> Everybody, come see. You're not going to believe it. Mr. Snuffers is hitting some hot licks with his tongue. (laughs) You know, when Brian was all needy and constantly seeking our attention and just rubbing on us all day it was annoying but now that the dog's doing it i kind of like it hey i'm brian uh can i go outside can i go outside can i go outside cool. can you open the door oh, I can do- i'll open the door He's pooping on the lawn. We need to figure out what kind of podcast we're going to do, Ben, because I don't have the energy to improvise a whole thing like that every time. 
Yeah, I mean, improv takes a lot out of you. It's it's one of the it's one of the most exhausting professions. It's one of the most dangerous professions. They have Navy SEALs go through improv training just to test their endurance. Yeah, the reason that they're called SEALs is because they get on the water, but then they can also do ground-based combat. It's kind of a yes land situation. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's not familiar with like the basic tenets of improv, um, good for you. <laughs> Congratulations. I I hope you're enjoying the money that you make at your job. <laughs> so, Brian, we need to get down to the meat and potatoes. We need to get down to the all gratin of it all. What is the podcast idea that you want to discuss today? You know how people have arguments and conflicts no. in real life and hmm. on the internet. I've heard of these, yeah. So the way that people talk during those things can be really interesting, mm -hmm. and the little tricks they play on each other to try to change the topic. You've heard of the um, the idea of weasel words, right? Yeah, I think I know what you're getting at. Weasel words are words that are just nonspecific enough that it becomes very difficult to nail someone down on what they're claiming. So... Uh, Let's say there's a, an idiot uh, president somewhere who might say something like a lot of people are saying a lot is kind of a weasel word or a weasel phrase in it that sentence. Because it doesn't mean anything just, it, specific. It doesn't mean anything in specific. It, 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 he could be referring to anyone. The group he's referring to could be small. They could be large. It doesn't mean anything. So you can't really say you're wrong. You, that's how you weasel out of you know being wrong in conversations. It's all got me thinking about a podcast that's all about these things that people say that are just so that sound reasonable and like back you into a corner on stuff, mm -hmm. and also just like manipulative language and how people and I, that can all sound very serious. Mm. Um, and, but I I also just think it uh, it's fun. To talk about the way people talk about things. Yeah, let's talk about talking. Let's talk talking. And then our we could do a, a podcast, a fan podcast for our own podcast. Called Let's Talk About Let's Talk About Talking. After talking, we talk about talking about talking. I'm interested in the concept of the way that people talk and they argue, even though it's it, it infuriates me. That sounds entertaining. I like listening to you get mad. <laughs> Why do you think I do half the things I do? <laughs> Do you want to brainstorm some examples of this? Of stuff that drives me crazy? Uh-huh. Uh, well, so I'll give... Um, I think my my uh, examples are going to be more in the realm of like personal relationships and communication. Oh, great. Okay, so, sure. Like, for example, if someone... If you were to say to someone, like, I just feel like you were attacking me, mm -hmm. and then the other person is going to be like, I wasn't attacking you, blah, 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 blah. And you're just like, hey, guess what? Right. I didn't say you were attacking me. Yeah. You got to listen to what I actually said. I felt like you were attacking. I remember me. I actually took a logic class in high school, which uh, should <laughs> yeah, it's a real surprise. Should, I really can't. I mean, I couldn't even tell. Every single human being needs to take a logic class in high school. Like, I cannot believe it is not mandatory in like every public school system. Why but do you say that? Because develop a proof. Premise one: y'all are dumb. <laughs> Granted. <laughs> premise two: you need to be less less dumb. Mm, I want to see some evidence for that. Uh, conclusion. Take a logic class. <laughs> okay. There's some steps missing. I think nope, you might want to go back, go back to your textbook. That's all of them. But I do remember talking about in that class, like if someone says I feel or I think or whatever, that statement can never be flagged as false. Yes. Um, if I think this, okay, true. You do think that. Yeah. But let's talk about the, that in, in, in that sense. Yeah. You know and it I just, mean? it matters. It's like, very like you can choose to focus on either part of that whether depending on whether you're having a conversation like about observable fact that we all need to agree on mm -hmm. or if it's like no w the point of this conversation we're having in a relationship is to get on the same page as each other yeah and understand the way that the other people think and they're just very different realms of communication i'll tell you uh, a, a communication trick that drives me crazy okay um i catnip it <laughs> Yes. That's the first thing came Every mind. time you walk towards me in the living room and you just throw catnip in my face, like it's that thing people do where they throw 
pocket sand at somebody's face to distract them, but you do it with catnip. I just it basically like throw a smoke bomb and disappear, yeah. but instead it's catnip. It's catnip. That's my least favorite way. Because I know it gets in your beard and then you can't stop playing with your beard. I can't stop playing with my beard. I'm up all night playing with my beard when I should be up all night playing with some other part of my body. You know the one I'm talking about. Yeah, and you, if you think I'm going to put catnip on your penis, you have another thing coming, my friend. My penis? Did you not mean your penis? No, I meant my hands. I play video games. Oh, well, what else do you hate? Is it when people interrupt you and, and derail your conversation based on just an impulse they had? No, that's my kink. Oh, okay. It's very hard to ask for, though, because it has to happen organically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like getting shot while eating a cigar. Exactly. I don't know what the technical term for it is, but I would call it like the irrelevant pivot or the Conway pivot, maybe, because Kellyanne Conway did it all the time when she was on TV a lot. What it, what this is, is someone is asked a question or accused of something or presented with some information. And that person, instead of directly responding to that information, takes like one word or phrase out of it and uses that to pivot to something completely irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So like hit, hit me with something and I'll, 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 I'll do a Conway pivot. Okay. Ben, while you've been quarantined here yeah. trying to recover your mind, which was blown by basic facts about our society, um, you have not been attending your, to your hygiene. And it's very clear that you haven't showered in four or five days. How do you respond to that? Uh, if you want to talk about showers, let's talk about how many great rainstorms we have been having and how these April showers are going to bring May flowers. That's the kind of positive news that the media is not focusing on. Now, why do you think that is? That is a really great point. I'm going to continue giving you airtime on my network <laughs> for, for like a year and a half. What about, what about, um, oh, 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 Ben, Yelp for people. And what it is, is we just rate each other oh. um, as just value as humans, trustworthiness, yes. all of this stuff. This isn't literally an episode of Black Mirror, but go on. Um, yeah. So <laughs> mad at you for pointing that out. Sorry. Two stars. <laughs> it's also an episode of Community. And the weird thing is Community did it first. And better. Yeah. <laughs> Rashida Jones wrote that episode of black mirror and it just wasn't very good and i think rashida jones is great um but i didn't think that episode of black mirror was very good so come at me come at me with a machine gun all right shoot me dead because it'll be better than living in this hell hole come on out come on out and get us fire up your machine guns with your words and the bullets in them and come down to i should probably bleep that yeah that was our address i hope you did uh, I don't want people la, 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 to find la, 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 la. us. Oh no! You know what word people use wrong all the time? Mm. Theory. Oh yeah. People use the word theory wrong all the time. Well, because it has different me. I, well, it has different. Say, it has different connotations. I want to be clear about our position on linguistics and the way that language develops. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, I think that we would both agree that language doesn't have a fixed meaning, no. um, but that instead the definitions change to fit the way people use words. However, well, we have to agree on which definition we're using when we get into like important discussions. That's why this fallacy is called equivocation. You have one word and you swap in one connotation of the word or definition uh, for another without bringing up the fact that you just did that. Oh, I'm not going to tell you which version of this word I'm using because it helps me for you not to know. Yes, right. So like theory, there's a colloquial connotation of the word theory, which just means like a uh, guess, like an educated guess. Like uh, I could say like, oh, I have a theory about how this season of Westworld's going to end. It's going to be bad. That's my theory. Yeah. Um, but in different from like music theory. Yes. In, 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 in the sciences, both hard and soft. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was just thinking about your hands with the catnip all over them. In the sciences, theory doesn't just mean a guess. A theory is a thing that's made out of facts. Think of facts as bricks and think of a theory as the building that those bricks make up. That's what theory is. It's an explanatory framework that is constructed from observable reality. It's not a guess. So quit saying that something's just a theory 
when you're talking about science because that doesn't make any sense. All right. Okay. You remember last last episode when we just made up fake rules to pull up? <laughs> what is this show? Before we jump back into the hilarious comedy <laughs> antics that we uh, constantly do, I just want to... Here's my advice if you're having a, a shitty internet conversation with somebody yeah. who's very, very wrong. Just keep asking them questions about how their point of view works. Yes. Just keep asking them and just be genuinely interested in it. You don't have to pretend like you like it or agree, but people will talk if they are asked about their thing. And if yes. that thing is weak, the more they talk about it, the more they will kind of realize it themselves. And that may, they may get really angry because you put them in that position. Like, you know, people killed Socrates and all that. Yeah. But people don't listen to each other almost ever. I'm sitting across from Benjamin Daniel something, and I don't know what he's been talking about this whole time. That's that's legitimately very good advice. It's hard advice to follow because emotions take over yeah. when someone is being very wrong and dumb and dangerous. But it is actually good advice. And what's going to happen most of the time is eventually, once you question them into a corner, they're just going to change the subject, and they're going to start attacking you about something unrelated. Right. But they will have had that experience. Yes. They will have have had their some part of them will have done more in intellectual work about their position than they had before especially when it comes to big things that people feel like are part of their identity people have to feel like they've changed their own mind they 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 can't really be made to feel like you that someone else like forced them to change their mind it has to feel like a voluntary process and that comes about slowly and it comes about through like introspection yeah, like if somebody uh, came in this room and shoved a piece of pizza down your throat, yeah. would you say you ate it? <laughs> or would you maybe describe that experience differently? <sighs> Welcome to the Philosophy and Linguistics Hour with uh, renowned comedians, Ben and Brian, <laughs> who are all the time funny and never anything other than that. <laughs> And we, we spend all of our time just being goofy, fun, fun, man. That's all we do. We, we combine to be one goofy, fun, fun, man. That's what we're doing most of the time. You know, it's, it's a weird trick. I don't know how we even pull it off. You know how all the Transformers come together to form Megatron, maybe? And don't we're, forget the Power Rangers. Like, we do that, but it's a goofy, fun, man. And weirdly, it's just one person. And it's not larger than either of us. And it's certainly not the sum total of our mass. No. It's just one average sized man that we come together to form. He's goofy fun man. He is a real pain in the ass. He's funny for a couple of minutes. And then you're like, get out of my apartment. You do nothing but bits. You are just <laughs> Chicago improv scene incarnate. You're a nonstop bit machine. And I'm trying to have a conversation. And then we separate and we stop being that person. You'll be lucky if you can get that many words in. <laughs> like, it's more just about physically removing us from the environment. Here's oh here's a question about a goofy fun fun man. Yeah. Um so the two of us we let us posit that a the two of us are both individually one whole human. All that right. Ben plus Brian equals two humans. Yeah. Right? So then when we become goofy fun fun man who is only one man, mm -hmm. then what is happening to the other to the remainder the the whole human that we have left behind? I'm reminded Brian of the Star Trek Voyager episode in which Neelix and Tuvok are fused together through a transporter accident, I think, and they become Tuvix. This moment is so sweet for me because I remember years ago where I was like, Ben, I'm just, I, I can't stop watching Star Trek. I think you'd really like it. And I feel like you were a little like, this is a great example of how people have to feel like they change their own minds. Yes, exactly. That's what we're talking about. And this was a completely, this was a completely innocuous thing. This is not a high stakes scenario. Yeah, this is a completely unimportant, just whether or not you like to watch Star Trek. And even then, I was just like, don't push me into that shit. I'll decide if I like Star Trek. <laughs> The new being's name, I believe, was Tuvix. <laughs> that, sounds, that just doesn't sound like the way that sounds. 
And he was, he was a new creature with a new identity. And the whole episode was an ethical discussion about whether they could separate him back out into two people. Because maybe there's a part of each of those people who's now gone that needs to be restored. But this new person was happy with their own being. Oh, my God. So that's what happens with us also when we turn into Mr. goof -em up or whatever we <laughs> called him before. His name changes all the time. He's like an ancient prophecy that's gone through many different incarnations and a lot of people have like copied it onto scrolls and slowly the divergences and the scroll copying lead to changes in theology and now it's like this whole thing there's a lot of factions in the Tuvok Neelix situation which one of us is from a creepy ass children's show and which one of us is off brand Spock <laughs> Just got to get that Voyager specific humor in All there. All right, everybody, you get to vote. <laughs> Out of Ben and Brian, which one's off brand Spock and which one's from a horror children's planet? You can tweet at us at Friend Dog Studio and you can find us on Facebook or you could just send an email to dog and friend dog at gmail.com. Or you can bring a gun to. I did it again. Don't please don't bring guns here. Oh, I don't know why I'm just saying stuff like that. Um, but genuinely, do you think that there's another universe in which a very serious Ben Bryan combo, <laughs> like gravely talk talk man, is is out there like taking the parts of us that aren't funny and and doing something very us with it? Who would that be? I don't I don't know. Al Gore. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to make this more complicated for a second. All right. So then let's say that Al Gore and mm -hmm. Goofy Fun Fun Man yeah. combine themselves into one being. Yep. Who is that? You get like John Oliver or somebody, right? Oh, hell yeah. If, if we, got combine... we got a recipe. We got a stew going. We got a stew going. What have you done with my machine? Did your voice change? I, I honestly can't remember. I don't think so. I, I think this is basically what I sounded like in the first scene. The person voicing me really only has like four characters. Weird. I'm Al Gore now. <laughs> Brian, how did you become Al Gore? It's a long story. It involves trans-dimensional speculation and all of the Star Trek episodes in your VHS library. I knew I shouldn't have left that in the bathroom. <laughs> My poops take a very long time. I like to be reminded that as long as this poop is taking, it's yet shorter than the journey across the galaxy that's faced by the crew of the Voyager. The stranded epic of Captain Janeway and her intrepid crew, many motley and at odds with each other, but forced to endure years of their presence, learning to work together and meeting strange new species, some of which, like the Vaudois, pose great dangers and even more ethical conundrums. This reminds me that it's not so bad that I gotta wait just a second for Mr. Ploppy to find his way to the bowl. Anyway, what the fuck were you doing? I'm trying to become John Oliver. Oh, well, that's easy. Put Goofy Fun Fun Man, this abomination creature you keep bringing around, into this chair. Did he get out of his cage? <laughs> Goofy Fun Fun Man, you get back in there. You get back in there. Now, get back in there. Bits. <laughs> You're so funny, Goofy Fun Fun Man. Bits, bits, <laughs> it's bits, dangerous. Bits, bits, bits. Oh, thanks for turning him into a creature that just says bits, 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 Uncle James. Yep, that's what I did. <laughs> Put him in one of the chairs, and then you, Al Gore, sit in this other one. This machine fuses people. Earlier, I think I said it switches their personalities, but I forgot to put one of the screws is not on the inside of it, because it's from Ikea, you see. And they never include quite as many of all of the parts that you need. I thought you made these things yourself. I'm a fucking fraud. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm about to become John Oliver. So. All right, become John Oliver. Cool.
hey everybody, it's me, still Ben, but on the other side of a music sting. This is the part of the show that we set aside to plug our Patreon page, but we're also aware that current events are just so incredibly current. You know, they're just, they're happening so hard and so much. And we think that if you do find yourself in a position where you're lucky enough to have some extra cash to toss around, it's probably best spent on people who could urgently use it. Charities and the like. We actually have a suggestion this week for a charity called modestneeds.org. The way they work is that they collect applications from people who have some small thing that needs to get taken care of that they just can't do. Maybe it's a medical bill. Maybe it's, you know, a payment on their car that they need to make so that the car doesn't get repossessed. Something like that. They vet the claim to make sure that it's legitimate. And then they take the money that their donors give them and they pay them directly to the creditors. Uh, so the money can't get spent on anything else. And it's a really good system. And it is especially useful right now when so many people find themselves out of work or behind on bills and just not sure what to do with themselves. So modestneeds.org. Pretty cool. Check it out. If you want to support us in a way that's not monetary, you can leave us reviews. We'd seriously appreciate that. Uh, you can review this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever the hell it is that you get podcasts. Also, just hit us up. Interact with us. Our web presence is Friend Dog Studios on pretty much all platforms, except for Twitter, where we had to leave the S off the name Friend Dog Studio because they've got like a character limit. <laughs> I guess that's a thing they're known for, huh? If you do happen to be just absolutely flush with cash and you'd like to throw a little bit our way to help us out right now, you can do that at patreon.com slash friend dog. It's basically throwing money in the tip jar. You can limit it to a very small amount per month if you'd like. And you get some cool perks like access to a back catalog of crazy bonus material, including our recent audio commentary track for the film Cats, which is now available to rent video on demand. Oh boy, check that out if you dare. We hope you're doing well, we hope you're keeping safe, and we hope you keep your sanity when you watch Cats. So, weasel words and manipulative language. I just oh. had a lot of trouble manipulating that word with my tongue in my mouth. I like that joke so much that I put in an extended musical sting. An extended old-timey showy musical sting. What is that from? I recognize that melody. Hooray for Hollywood! <laughs> that's, right, that's right. I wish at this point, Ben, that we had like, uh, we were on a radio, we could have callers, because I really just want to hear what people's different examples let's of this. go ahead and do it let's open up the phone lines right now and uh let's see uh who calls in okay great great okay we're oh, gonna... brian i've got somebody on the line for you, you um from uh C carolina tennessee do, do we have a name on this producer uh yeah this name is charmton uh all right next up uh we have charmton from chattanooga tennessee hello charmton yeah hello i was wondering if you had seen where I left my shoes, because I have not seen, I'm not been able to find them. I've looked high and low. So the thing is, with all of this staying on the inside of my house, I have often forgot where my shoes are, and I Ch wonder... Trumpton, I'm just going to stop you right there. Right now we are talking about ways that people manipulate one another through language of um, implement logical fallacies in their in their arguments. You want to talk about a little bit about that? Right. So what I'm thinking is they may have gotten bored and walked off on their own. Shoot, they are boots and they were made for walking. And that's just what they'll do. So I was wondering if we could form a search party while maintaining a six foot distance and just see if we can round up my shoes, bring them home, let them know that I love them. If you're listening out there right now, Bootsy Cutesies, you should know that I'll have a place for you in my closet and my soul is matched to your soul. All right, Champton, I'm going to hang up on you now. Ben, did you hear all that? <laughs> you uh, no, I, I was not listening. I rarely listen to anyone else in a conversation. That is an excellent idea. We should get a pizza. Looks like we've got someone online. I have to go to the bathroom real quick. Oh, okay. You go to the bathroom. I'll take this caller. All right. Uh, we've got somebody from a local area. You're on the line. 
Yeah, guy, uh, I just want to talk to you, guy, for a second there. My name is Ben. Uh, yeah, all right, guy. Um, you know, I heard about these, uh, weaselly words, and I think maybe I've got some in the floorboards, actually. I've been hearing, in the middle of the night, I've been hearing little words like, uh, well, actually, uh, the thing is, here's the thing, and, um, uh, well, what you don't understand is, and, well, let me play devil's advocate, all these little things, I think I've got an infestation of weaselly words in my in my house. And oh. I was wondering what they're, uh, what they're attracted to, so I want to put out some traps for them. Well, have you been making any generally good points about women lately? Because those sorts of phrases that you're describing really attract that kind of thing. Um, yeah, that might be what attracted them. You're going to want to get up under those floorboards and just take a bat to those. Oh, good. Um, a bat. Um, I also do have a problem with bats. Let me tell you all about it before you hang, hang up. I haven't done it yet. You just stopped talking. That's weird. Oh, uh, you know, I'm just a, hang up. I'm just a very easy person to work with. Hang up. It, it's interesting. You keep saying that, but it doesn't happen, guy. Hang up. Hey, listen, guy. I'm really glad you said that because okay, I've been Google. thinking about hanging up. Hang up. Oh, Brian, you're back from the bathroom. Yeah. Whew. Good thing I had an episode of Star Trek Voyager in there. That piss took a very long time. Yeah. Okay, we've been recording for about 50 minutes. In order to get to feature length... We need 35 more minutes because that's a 90 minute film. And if we're going to option this podcast into a Hollywood film, as has been the goal to my understanding thus far. <laughs> hey, everybody, future Ben here just popping in for a second to say, I know that 35 plus 50 is in fact 85, not 90. Don't at me. Back to the program. <laughs> we're going to need another 35 minutes. So let's list all the words that we know. Hardbark. Carbuncle. Distance. Poison. Lightbox. Quick. Tasty. Miniaturized. Punching. Civil disobedience. Explosion. Shooting range. Anhedonia. Bored. Truck nuts. Coconut. Limbic system. Nanometer. Antagonistic. That's all the words I know. Oh boy, we really ran out. That's all the words that you should be allowed to know. That is the limit of words that I'm allowed to use. Yeah, it should be, you know, however much um, education you have paid for from our educational system that costs money, yes. as it should, um, however much money you've put in, that is the level at which you should be able to use language. To each according to their knowledge, from each according to their knowing the, how to words to do him. Uh, to each according to their knowledge, from each according to however much money they have left. As Groucho Marx said that. Mm, yeah, I wouldn't belong to any club. It's what he said. That's what he said. He said, I wouldn't belong to any club. He said, time flies like an arrow. That's all he said. <laughs> He said, I shot an elephant in my pajamas. Just that was the facts. And then he would eat his cigar and get shot. That's how his life ended. He was so rich. He was so rich, and he had so many cigars. It was only a matter of time. We cut out the part where we talked about Winston Churchill being an Australian who got shot while eating a cigar on the steps of Buckingham Palace, which is in Australia yeah. from last week's episode. Oh. Uh, but that just sounds like something that he would probably say. Stiff upper lip. And how that elephant got in my pajamas, I'll never know. <laughs> I always thought the British saying was stiff upper dick. Because the British have uh, an upper dick and a lower dick. Have you ever seen a London like bus? How they've got the a two double decker. Levels, the two, I assumed that their buses and their penises. <laughs> yeah, what you're thinking of is a double dicker. And I can't believe Ben is like... Throwing his hands up in the air like he can't believe that he didn't think of that. And I can't believe it either. None of this is going in the podcast. <laughs> Let's just lay back and think of England. <laughs> we can keep some of Did that. Did any of this make it into the podcast? Tweet at me. If <laughs> Tweet at me if you heard this part where we talk about double dicks. Let's just say that if you heard the bit we just did, you... <laughs> Cannot imagine the horribly gross and unfunny things we said along the way. If there was a Peter Jackson-esque extended cut of this podcast, even then those bits would not be included. If there was a Peter Jackson extended cut of the bit that we just did, the parts that you didn't hear were the parts where Andy Serkis kind of got on set in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and created some footage nobody is ever allowed to see. Where he would get on the mo in the motion capture bodysuit 
while doing the Gollum voice, but just kind of prancing around and just going, Andy time! It's Andy time! Andy time for us! Here comes the Andy time! I don't know if that's Gollum or if that's Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. <laughs> Or if that's uh, Smeagol and Stitch. Oh, that's and a movie Stitch. I would watch. I would absolutely watch Smeagol and Stitch. When this episode of the podcast gets adapted into a film, which it's going to, that's going to be... This episode, not even the whole run of the podcast. No, this episode is going to be called Smeagol and Stitch. Let's do prawns and cones. Cones and prawns. Cons, prawns and if, and cons. if you missed the last episode, just know we used to call this segment pros and cons where we would talk about the pros and cons of the idea. Now we call it cones and prawns because we like doing that. Yeah. Let's just restate the idea because we're a little far away from it now. Right. The idea is to create a podcast talking about talking where we talk about the way that people, the ways that people communicate and the problems inherent in that. So cones. Cones. I think it could be a high stress podcast. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, anger that can come up when the state of the world is as it is and people are as stupid as they are, which I'm not <laughs> saying is like a new development in human history. Nah. Um, but it certainly is amplified by, you know, all the electrons that are constantly floating in between all of our computers and stuff. The other, Another cone that comes to my mind is the this, this sort of inherent strangeness of... A couple of white guys basically like explaining to everybody how they should be thinking. Not a good look. It's not it's not the optics aren't good. Yeah. Even if the points would be valid, the optics wouldn't be great. Which is not a certainty. Uh, we might make bad points. Oh, sure. That's we, another cone. We might end up making very bad points. We would be stepping uh, slightly out of the realm of comedy and into we should be held accountable for more of the things that we say. And you don't want to become one of those entertainers that's like a Schrodinger's comedian where it's just like, oh, I'm a satirist. So if I say something that's like irresponsible, I was just joking. But <laughs> if I say something that's accurate and right on, then I was being witty and satirical. Oh my and God. Just like, that's actually like a weasel wordy kind of yeah, thing right there. That's a big weasel wordy. That's thing. real. I love that Schrodinger's comedian. You don't know <laughs> if it's a comedian until you see what the public response was. Right. Just like, it was a joke. That was just a, it was a joke. I'm just I'm just a comedian, you know. So if I spread this piece of clearly false information, it was just a joke. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's not good. Hey everybody, Future Ben cutting in here one more time just to point out that this whole bit we're doing right now about how people say irresponsible stupid things and then say they were kidding if it turns out there's backlash. We recorded this episode before the President of the United States said that you should inject yourself with cleaning products and then said he was kidding. Isn't reality fun? Back to the program! <laughs> Let's talk about prawns. I had a really good time with you uh, recording this episode. <laughs> it was somewhere between us doing a performance and the kind of just normal conversations that we would have about the world. Another prawn, and this is sort of antithetical to the whole mission of the thing, but controversy gets views. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that the central hey, tenet of... Can you come over here for just a minute? Oh, yeah. I don't know that we want to clue people in to the idea that controversy... Uh, sparks interest oh, right. um, because that's actually what we're depending on in order to make millions of dollars off of our podcast. Oh, right. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, maybe we should go back, call that a cone. Like, oh, oh boy, we don't want to bring controversy into the world that a bunch of people start talking about on right. the internet right. because there's already enough of that in the world. But like, we might just have to do it because it's such a good idea. Yeah. Don't tell them. All right. Hut, hut, break. Uh, so yeah, definitely a cone would be that, um, you know, people might get upset about the things we say. I hate conflict. And I don't want a whole bunch of people like arguing and commenting on, on our content and sharing it around. Another prawn is that, uh, you know, if we did it in such a way that it really was sort of like a logic lesson type thing, but entertaining and engaging, I think that there's a dire need for that kind of product in the world i agree with that for sure that's a big prawn and another prawn is i like the idea of having a sort of a legitimate topic to base things off of um not because we're 
the smart guys who need to tell people stuff, but because we're interested in things and we could maybe bring people on who could help educate us and yeah. and in turn the people who listen to the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. All right, scale of one to ten. One being can't do this podcast, won't do this podcast. Ten being this is the next big idea. It's going to make us rich. Where do you fall on that scale? I'm putting it at like a nine. I really really dig it. Yeah, I really dig it. I mean, the idea of bringing on some guests and talking about how we talk and making it funny, but also informative really appeals to me. I think you're right. I think I'm at like a 7.5 right now. Like I'm I'm, I'm like you don't get 0.5s. There are no 0.5s. It's not a 20 point scale. It's a 10 point scale, Ben. I'm sick of telling you that. Okay. you don't get to hem and haw between a seven and an eight. Pick one. Pick one that stick to it. All right, just for that, I'm going down to a seven. Oh, okay. Look what you Look, just talked uh, yourself if you, into. If you bring it up to an eight, I'll bring mine down to an eight. This is how political wheeling and dealing works. Yeah. In, I almost said Hollywood. I meant Washington. <laughs> What's the goddamn difference? The The only reason I'm not like at a full 10, the only reason I don't have a stiff, stiff upper dick about this is that my blood pressure is too high all the time. It w- I would have to approach this in a very careful and methodical way in order to not explode. Right. We'd have to have a therapist on retainer. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. That's it. That's I'll the- go down to a seven for that if you go back up to a nine. Okay, great. Yeah, deal, right, deal, cool. deal. I'm cool. at a nine now. You're down to a seven. Yeah. This is how the stock market works. Is it? <laughs> yeah. Somebody says, I'm rich and it's about to stop. Do you want to trade your six for my nine? And then they go have sex. <laughs> On that note, we are going to wrap up this episode of Brian Wants to Do a Podcast. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you next time. And until then, come to our house at and kill us with fire. Damn it! Ben! Ben!